Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. My apologies for the delay on a new set of videos I was going to do them last week, or start them last week, but unfortunately I came down with a little bit of a sickness, so I was out for a couple days, and then I just recently came back from a trip. Um, so now everything's much better, so uh, everything is good to go with regards to this latest series of videos, and thank you again as always for your suggestions. I was able at least to put out one more video before I went on my trip, and that was that Urban Legends video I made about the curse of Bodie, California. Pretty interesting stuff, again, so if you have a chance, check it out, and uh, you'll be able to uh, hopefully have some kind of input to share on what I talked about in that video so as always thank you for your suggestions for these cryptids I uh, selected a few that I'm gonna talk about here and I'm gonna give them out throughout the week so please keep on coming just in case uh, this first video I picked it because it reminded me so much of another video that I did a couple of months back and I had to do with the Shelly coat uh, that one if you haven't seen it in essence it's um, just uh, a creature of sorts that's almost like a trickster and this is a trickster that likes to play I guess you could call it quote unquote play with travelers and likes to trick them and get them lost and so when I found this particular uh, cryptid this suggestion I realized how similar these particular uh, creatures were compared to one another the only difference is that um, one of them seems to be a little bit more malevolent or I guess evil than the other one and at least with the locations they are different so this one is called the Gwilion and I hope I'm saying that right but that's how it's spelled phonetically so Gwilion is the particular uh, uh, cryptid this time around and you would have to find this cryptid apparently in Wales so I haven't seen anything uh, when I was looking up information on the Gwilion whether it's located anywhere else so if anybody knows of any other location or any other stories associated with this cryptid then uh, you know please post them below but apparently the only location thus far is still in Wales so what is the Gwilion? Well much like the Shelly coat it's a creature, a humanoid type creature as you can see from a picture here that is uh, seems like also like the Shelly coat like a homeless type creature and homeless in the sense that it fits the usual vagabond type description that you would of somebody that's homeless. It's disheveled, it's unclean, um, its features are not necessarily pretty on there. Um, it looks like something that was a humanoid of some sort that's just been living out nomadically for years and years on end and that's the creature that we're talking about here. The Shelley coat is male, but in this case the Gwilion is female. And this one is again located in Wales. And much like the Shelley coat, the Gwilion apparently lives for one purpose only. It's an entity of some sort that has been around for hundreds of years. Um, what type of entity it is, I don't know. It could be a deity, it could be a paranormal creature, it could be a regular cryptid, it could be a lost soul of some sort, who knows, there hasn't been much description on there, but the key thing with this particular creature is that, again, like the Shelly Coat, it is a trickster. Its sole purpose is essentially to play tricks on people that it comes across, with its favorite trick being getting people hopelessly lost in the woods. That is apparently its most... Uh, joy of some sort. I mean, this is what it lives for, and these are the tales that are associated with it. Um, I find actually this particular Cryptid de Gwilliam to be, again, a little bit more evil than the Shelly Coat, because with this Gwilliam, it seems to truly enjoy what it does. Um, uh, it seems like, again, its sole purpose is to find unsuspecting people, manage to get them lost, and then enjoying it for a long, long time on there, as this person essentially um, ends up getting so lost that it could, this person could die out there after many days of being in oscillation or not being able to find any kind of civilization. So, so the Gwilion is again from Wales, and it is apparently some kind of entity, a spirit of some sort that lives within the mountain areas there. So, if you're in the Wales area and you're especially in the mountainous area and it also it's combined with the thick forestry locations there then you have a good chance that you'll run into this particular creature on there and it's described as being an old woman who apparently always wears ash-colored clothing 
She wears a four-pointed hat, which is oblong, which is kind of like those hats that one usually sees, um, I guess, in the olden times on there. And then uh, one of the most distinctive things that uh, this creature has is it carries a pot within its hand. What What's within the pot, I don't know. The stories didn't say anything about what's in it, uh, whether it's water or whether it's gold or whether it's something else altogether. It doesn't. Uh, there's no description on there at all, but it carries this pot and it creates, I guess, some kind of noise associated with that pot. But at least that noise is again coming from the pot directly. But the Gwilion actually creates its own noise, and it's two variations of it. One, and you'll know you're being the presence of a Gwilion, is when you hear a maniacal cackling of some sort which is again like described as a hair raising laughter and again that that is not good that sounds evil on that part whenever you hear something like this say you're wandering in the forest at night uh, you're wandering and you're looking around you suddenly start to realize that you know what I could be a little bit lost on here and then you hear this out in the wilderness and it is not a good situation on there so this uh, laughter is again uh, considered hair raising and has also been described as very disturbing on there. This is not the good kind of laughter, the kind that you and I would perceive somebody um, you know, being a good person. No, this is something that's coming from an entity of some sorts that is pretty, pretty evil. So um, that's one thing. The other sound that apparently the creature emits... And this is strange, but this is exactly what I'm, you know, word for word, exactly what it says. Apparently, it cries the word "wub," which is just two letters, W B "wub," and it cries it. Um, and this is on top of its disturbing laughter. I don't know exactly what that "wub" is supposed to mean. One article mentioned that the "wub" could be um, a slurred variation of the words "wow up." I don't know exactly what that means, too, on there. Um, if that's a particular term that's familiar there in Wales, and somebody knows about that, the words wow up, two words, wow up, then please um, post it below. It could be, uh, you know, a unique phrase that's said there in Wales, and this creature is doing it, but the way that it talks, it slurs it, and so it comes out as whoop. But apparently it yells this also to anybody that's within the vicinity on there. It yells it. And along with the maniacal laughter that it provides, uh, yeah, this is a creature that is not very nice to have around on there. So this creature, apparently, again, it just likes to be able to denote gloom. It hides in the mountainous areas there in Wales. Um, and the way it works is whenever somebody comes across this particular path, um, it'll actually in like come down from the mountains and start following this particular person apparently the guillian can either turn invisible or it can uh do something where it follows the person but the person is not able to see it so either it's a very very good uh entity of hiding right at the exact moment kind of like the hide behind that i talked about a little while back or it could be actually invisible, but altogether it follows the person across its path. And its sole purpose, again, is to somehow try to make sure that the person gets lost. And how it does this, the articles never really describe, but one could assume that it, it starts creating sounds. Let's say you know that your path is going to be, uh, that you have to take a left, but if you are the Gwilion and you start making these sounds, towards the left hand side then naturally you want to stay away from the left hand side and so you'll start going towards the right and then when that happens inadvertently uh, the Gwilian will probably try to disorient you yet again and have you turn another direction maybe further towards the right or maybe further south or further north but after doing that several times then you can see exactly how um, the, you'll have something where the person gets lost and then that's when the entity is cackling even more so and that's when it, people realize that it's quote unquote always much too late so but also what's interesting about the Gwilin is it not only descends from the mountainous areas whenever it comes across somebody crossing its path but actually it, it even goes down on its own 
and it visits, and this is the kind of scary part, it visits homes near and around its area. Apparently it does this because whenever it's, rain, it's raining in those mountainous areas, the Gulian likes to have some kind of comfort. And so when it does this, it actually enters a home to stay warm, with or without your permission. And so when it enters and you come across it, and you'll know again because the Gwilian has that distinctive look, that disheveled, old, uh, hag-type homeless look. Um, if you come across it on there, it's there, but it's in, in that particular instance, it's not there to cause harm. All it is is apparently it's just trying to stay warm. So this is actually one of the unique situations where the Gwilian um, is, is not there to do any harm whatsoever. And if you do come across the Gwilian at that moment, one should understand that um, because it's not there to cause any harm, you in turn should not do anything to provoke it itself. Apparently, um, the people there that are there in that Wales area that have come across the Gwilian in their homes, they realize that with the Gwilian just looking for a warm place to stay, um, it's best to just leave it alone. It'll stay on its own. In fact, um, it's even been said that clean water is provided as a courtesy to the Gwilian, whether it's to drink or to bathe or whatever on there. And that when this happens, the Gwilian, again, won't thank you, won't, won't do anything as far as acknowledging your gratitude, but at the same time, it won't do anything to harm you on there. So uh, it's just kind of unique on that part. It's almost like a truce of some sorts in that situation where the Gwilian understands that um, where it's at now, it's at the whim or I guess the mercy of the owner of the home there. And so it's almost laying down its arms of sorts and not attacking in any way, not trying to be malice or malicious in any way or display any kind of malice. Instead, it's just purely looking for a place to stay temporarily. And as long as you acknowledge this and provide clean water, then it's perfectly fine on there. Now, that being said, there apparently have been instances where the Gwilian, even with even um, having some kind of courteous, uh, kind manners displayed to it, it still decides to go up to its old tricks and either starts frightening or intimidating the people. There are apparently ways, to, uh, one way, uh, to essentially keep the Gwilian at bay or even cause it to flee. And this also comes into play too whenever um, the Gwilian, if somebody conf uh, is confronted by the Gwilian directly in the forest or the mountainous areas, this also works there. It's a little bit rare, but apparently the Gwilian not only likes to um, make people lost, but do it from a faraway stance, but it apparently likes to also take on, like, actually confront people directly, and that's when this particular one action stops in its track completely, and this is apparently, it should be left only as a final resort, um, whenever there's no other possible way to avoid the Gwilian, and the Gwilian is coming directly at you, this is one way to do it, the only way, apparently, and that is to flash a knife. Apparently, it is allergic or it is extremely anxious whenever a knife is presented a metal knife is presented towards it whatever happened during the Gwilian's earlier life um, it, it, would, it sees knives as the ultimate form of I guess you could call it kryptonite it is its ultimate way of potentially killing it and it recognizes the metal knife or knives as the only way to do it harm and so once it sees a metal knife it'll flee. It'll actually go away um, as quickly as possible from you and that's it. Although again this is advised not to do so because whenever a knife is presented um, not only does the Gwilian flee but apparently the Gwilian uh, does not like it of course and it decides that it could uh, come back at you later on on there. So pretty scary stuff on there. So it's apparently the people that are around the area in Wales travel around with knives in their pockets or in their bags and they have it just in case if they come across a Gwilian and just in case if as a last resort the Gwilian is confronting them directly then they have a knife handy just to flash it and then that's it on there so and then as always again um, if the Gwilian comes at their home and the Gwilian is not acting nicely and is actually starts confronting the person then uh, apparently people have knives hidden um, in and around re, uh, easily accessible areas so that way they can um, 
take on the Gwilin, not necessarily directly themselves, but show that with this knife, it'll draw the person away on there. Pretty, pretty e uh, scary stuff on that part. Um, of course, it could be a coincidence that people already carry knives whenever they're hitchhiking. The idea being that um, they could need it whenever they need to create uh, something from wood or cut some rope or um, hunt some animals, anything like that. But um, the idea that you know knives are still there and for the sole purpose of having a, comfort, a potential confrontation with this Gwilian pretty scary stuff on there so what do you guys think what is the Gwilian um, do y'all believe that it's something like an actual cryptid like a long lost monster of some sorts is it some kind of deity some kind of entity uh, something in terms of a supernatural or paranormal type stuff um, it's actually been described as being an outlaw of the wild I mean that's apparently one of its um, I guess mantras and it shows you an idea of exactly what it is again this is something that being as an outlaw it's it's something that is there to do bad things to people and so if anybody knows any particular experiences associated with the Gwilian uh, please please you know post them below share them below uh, it'd be interesting to see any particular tales uh, from people hearing that supposedly very disturbing laughter in the far distance or if anybody has any of such laughter actually recorded and anybody has a link to it uh, you know post them below I'd be happy to kind of share this with everybody in a weird in a, in a creepy way try to hear what others have experienced on there and if anyone knows um, any other particular stories with the Gwilin that are more recent I try to see if there was anything within the um, I guess past couple of decades but no nothing really that's come up apparently this is a creature that is so good at what it does that nobody has been able to record it or do any kind of photographs of it anything like that it's apparently still there in Wales but it's just very very hard to get a hold of when it comes to any physical recording so interesting to see if anybody has that so alright everybody thanks again as always take care